In this video, we're going to look at the photos we took on the computer and see how well our different setups turned out and also look at some quick fixes that we can apply to make these photos look as good as possible. I've got two sets of photos here. This first set uh, was the, with the photos I took with the uh, regular kind of domestic light bulbs, the warm white light bulbs. And this second row down here were taken with either just pure daylight or daylight combined with the studio daylight balanced bulbs. I just imported these into the Photos app on my Mac. This is the free software that comes with the computer and has very basic editing controls. Uh, but this is good enough for the kind of things we're going to do here. Obviously you're going to have much greater control if you're using something like Photoshop or Lightroom. Before we get into the individual setups, I just wanted to have a look at one problem that I see in a lot of these product photography shots and that is underexposure. Even if you're using studio lighting, if you're shooting with uh, a camera that's on automatic settings, and in particular with a phone, when you've got a lot of white background, a lot of pale color in the background, then sometimes the camera will try and compensate for that by underexposing the photo. This is far too underexposed. If you compare the white here with the white of the interface, you can see how, just how dark it is. Now, there's many other things that are wrong with this photo, but this is something to watch out for, especially if you've got your camera set on automatic. So I'm not even gonna bother looking at that one. I'm gonna go straight into the uh, slightly better exposed shots. This is the first of the shots I took with the desk lamps. And there are a couple of really obvious problems. You can see on each side of the drill, there's a very obvious and distracting shadow. It's quite a natural looking. It's something that the, the human eye picks up and just doesn't look right. And there's nothing we can really do about that. Uh, and secondly, you can also see there's a there's a quite a noticeable shift in the colour of the white, what should be a white background. So it's kind of pinky, pinky purpley on this side, and it's kind of got a greeny yellow tinge on the other side. Now, if I try and correct the colour balance, or the white balance rather, of this photo by using this tool down here and picking what I believe is a neutral grey it will have a very different effect depending on what I pick in the background as being my neutral gray color. So I click over here on the right, it corrects the color balance for the whole photo, but it gives it an even more kind of greeny cast. And if I click over here on the left, it gives it a very purpley cast. So there's nothing we can really do about that here. The one solution, if you're forced to use a photo like this that's got this conflicting color balances because we're using two slightly different color light bulbs, is to cut out the background in Photoshop and then apply a desaturation filter. <clears throat> but I'm not going to use that photo because I know that we took, even with those two desk lamps, we took a couple of much nicer shots. So the third shot here is one that we took with the reflectors in place. So we pointed the desk lamps away from the product onto a couple of bits of foam board and then reflected the light back on. Now you might be able to spot that this is actually a very flawed photograph but I thought it was worth looking at because it gives, a, gives us an important lesson to learn. You can see that it's very blurry. If I zoom right in you can see there's a lot of camera shake basically and that's because the exposure was uh, too slow. If we pull up the information pane for this photo, we can see it was shot at a shutter speed of 1 33rd of a second. So that's still pretty fast. And we had the camera on a tripod, but I suspect that just the action of touching the shutter button on the camera gave it enough wobble as it was taking the photo to cause this, this uh, blurred image. So there's nothing we can do to repair that. There's perhaps uh, two lessons to learn from this. One is to examine your photos as you take them. So you can always retake some more when you have the setup all there in front of you. And the second lesson I think is just to take lots of photos, use lots of different settings, use lots of different setups, physical setups, and try and get as much variation as possible so that when it comes to editing them down, you've got a lot of different ones to choose from. So again, we're not gonna use this photo. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this photo was taken with exactly the same lighting setup uh, but I used the manual settings on the camera and I also introduced a small delay. So there was a two second delay after pressing the shutter button to give the camera a bit of time to stabilize and take a really steady shot. 
and you can see that it's much crisper. If I pull up the information, uh, you can see the ISO is much lower, 25. It was 125 on the previous shot. And correspondingly, it's a much slower shutter speed, one fifth of a second compared to one thirty third of a second. But the shutter speed doesn't matter because it's on a tripod and I had that little delay as well. Now he's still got the same problem with the color, the two lights being slightly different colors, but because they are reflected onto the image, there's much more mixing of the two light sources. So you don't get quite such a harsh effect with the different color temperatures. So to fix this photo up, I think there's only a couple of things we need to do. Firstly, we need to set a neutral, uh, a neutral gray to correct the color temperature. So again, I'm just gonna go in here and pick a, a slightly shadowed part. Uh, I'm reasonably happy with that. I think that's, that's okay. It doesn't introduce too much of a cast. The second thing I want to do, because this is a raw photo that's come straight off the camera, it hasn't really had any post-processing. If you're shooting with um, automatic settings, maybe using just the stock camera app on your phone, it will do all kinds of things to try and improve the photo. One of the most common things it would do is to apl apply quite a lot of sharpening. So we can apply some automatic sharpening here. If we zoom in to a place of high contrast, you can see that sharpening taking place. So this is with the sharpening applied. This is without any sharpening. It's really noticeable actually up here, we're starting to get some artifacts. So I would say that's too much sharpening and that's also quite a common problem. Lots of camera phones in particular will apply far too much sharpening, which is okay for kind of holiday snaps, but it can introduce this slightly artificial banding around the edges of, of products. So I think we should have some sharpening, but just turn the intensity down. That's about right. Now I think the exposure and color settings for that shot are okay, and it's pretty much ready to go. Obviously I could crop this down uh, to just have the white background, or I could take it into Photoshop and, and add in some white areas here if I need to keep this much space around the shot. Let's compare this shot with the photos we took in daylight. So let's look at our daylight shots. That's these ones here. Here's the first photo just taken with light coming in through the window from this side of the image. And uh, it's okay, it's, it's a bit too dark and there's not really enough light falling on the front of the, uh, the drill here. Now, if, if I had to use this setup, if this was uh, my only available light source, I could probably get away with this, perhaps just by turning the drill to face in the, the other direction. Here it is with the first of the two reflectors, the slightly smaller reflector. And if you look here on the back of the drill, we can start to see a little bit more definition when the reflector is in place. So even that's quite a good improvement. And here it is with the larger reflector, again, an even better improvement. So that's a pretty simple way to use natural light only to take a passable shot. And in fact, probably with some minor editing, we could improve this a little bit more. So again, I'm going to pick a neutral color for the background. And I think here, because it's still quite dark, we need to increase the exposure. Now there are lots of settings here and depending on what software you're using, you'll have different settings. I wouldn't advise using these automatic settings, but we can perhaps just increase the, uh, the exposure slightly. And perhaps also because our darker areas are, are a little bit difficult to, to see, we could increase um, a bit of exposure in the shadows. So if I switch that off, you can see the difference. And that's probably enough. Again, I would probably go down to the sharpen settings and apply a little bit of sharpening. When you're applying sharpening, it's important to look at the pixels at 100% or even 200% so you can see what's going on. But I think that's about as good as that photo is gonna get and I'm pretty happy with that. This next one, we added one daylight studio light. So a very powerful light that's quite well color balanced for the daylight and it's coming, you can see the highlights that are coming in on this side of the drill, that's where the, the light was pointing. And it's probably a bit too harsh. With this shot, I added a second uh, studio light, and I also turned down the exposure slightly. So you're seeing a little bit more detail in these highlighted areas. And this is pretty good. But the last photo, I think perhaps is the best candidate. This one has the same two lights, but I brought 
the second light a bit further around to the front to show a bit more detail in this area here. If you compare this with the previous one, you can see there's just a little bit more light and there's black areas of the drill. So I'm going to use this as my, I think, as my candidate final photo. And there's very little editing I need to do here. Again, I can uh, pick a neutral grey. It's very difficult to do because there's not much grey in this photo, but there's a bit down here I could try. And again, I'm going to apply a little bit of sharpening. Let's uh, zoom in on some detail. I wouldn't do this if it was a JPEG because the JPEG would already be sharpened, but for a raw file, I think it's worth doing. Now I could go in and fix some of the blemishes on this background. So for example, over here, you can see there's a mark. In fact, there's a couple of marks, but in practice, what I do with a photo like this probably is Photoshop in some white areas on these edges if I wanted to use that. Otherwise, I would just crop it down. So for example, if I was going to put this on Instagram, I might use a crop like this. So let's compare this shot with the shot that we took with the regular warm white light bulbs. So I've exported both of those from photos as JPEGs and I'm just opening them now side by side in preview. On the left is the photo I took with the regular desk lamps and on the right is the photo I took with the studio daylight balance bulbs. There's actually some things I like about this photo with the desk lamps. I think the lighting is a little bit more dynamic. You've got slightly more interesting highlights on the barrel of the drill here that I think show off really nicely. And uh, perhaps this photo, the lighting is a little bit too diffuse. Uh, that's one of the risks if you use heavily diffuse lighting. You can end up with a very flat, sort of static, boring looking photo. So perhaps if I was going to retake this, I might try and move one of the lights a little bit closer to make the light, one of the light sources a bit more diffuse and get some more interesting highlights. But I would say that one of the problems with this shot is there's quite a lot of variation across the background. It's quite, uh, quite light over here on the right and quite dark over here on the left. And that's one of the problems with having these very small light sources. Here, we've got a much nicer, flatter background that's going to be much more easy to work with if we needed to do any retouching in Photoshop or any work in graphic design. And the other advantage that comes across with these studio lights is that because they're more powerful, we can shoot at a faster shutter speed or a lower ISO. And that gives us just a little bit more detail in the shot. There's a little bit more clarity in this studio shot. For example, I can read this text made in the Czech Republic, uh, whereas it's a little bit more difficult to read here. So once you've got a shot like this that you're happy with, all that remains is to export it. What I'd suggest is you export it in the highest possible quality. So either an uncompressed JPEG or a PNG file. But if you're going to put it on a website, you need to compress it and perhaps resize it to the appropriate amount. So in this case, for example, this photo is far larger than it would need to be for any web use. And you can certainly reduce that size if you're going to embed it onto a web page. That's it for this series. I hope you have fun staging and taking and editing your product photos.